If you've been following Dr. Devin C. Clare, you know that he updates his supplement protocol from time to time. And in each interview, he gives another piece of his protocol. And certain supplements that appear in one interview, he does not mention them in other interviews. Sometimes it's hard to follow his protocol today. What he's doing today, that's what we want to know. Now, since I know Dr. David Sinclair work since 2007, since I read many studies that he published, even before he went public in 2019, here I have collected for you from a variety of sources, including Sinclair's book, trying to figure out everything it takes today, and how much from each supplement. And in this video, I'm also going to include a very spicy comment from Dr. Sinclair about resveratrol. So if you take the supplements, you really want to see this. Now, let's start. Welcome to the Wellness Messiah podcast. I'm your host, Rimon. Vitamin D and vitamin K2. I would like to start with these because Dr. David Sinclair stopped mentioning these supplements in the latest interviews. In his book, he said, I take a daily dose of vitamin D, vitamin K2. But in 2021, he mentioned that he's still taking all the supplements that he mentioned in the book. Let's hear it from him. What are you currently taking, uh, doses and such like? Yeah, well, actually, it hasn't changed since I wrote uh, Lifespan 18 months ago. So page 304, see the list. Now, if you do consider to take these supplements, you wonder, why does Dr. David Sinclair take these vitamin D and vitamin K2 supplements? In this segment, he explains why, so you can make up your own mind about your health. I take vitamin D, vitamin K2. K2 is a really important one which keeps the calcium out of your arteries and puts it into your bones where it's needed. So even though Dr. David Sinclair doesn't mention vitamin D and K in every interview he gives, I guess because they are more nutritional choice of supplements than longevity supplements on which he's mostly asked about, the reasons he gave are solid and it's safe to assume that he still take them. What about the dose of those two supplements? I never found one interview where he mentioned specific doses of those two supplements. A standard dose of vitamin D is between 2,000 to 5,000 units, and a standard dose of vitamin K2 is somewhere between 50 to 120 micrograms. So I estimate that his dose fall within this range. The verdict? He still takes vitamin D and K2, and the dose is unknown. Let's move to the next one. This is his most famous supplement, resveratrol. So let's go back. In 2019 book, he mentioned, I take one gram of NMN every morning along with one gram of resveratrol shaken into my homemade yogurt. Does he still take the same dose? In 2022, in his very long interview in his channel, he confirmed, I'm quoting, I've been taking one gram of resveratrol since 2004. So it's the same exact dose, the one he wrote in his book. Confirmed. Of course, if you follow Sinclair, it's not just how much resveratrol it takes, but also how. Now that has been evolved over the years. So I showed you in the book that he mentioned in 2019 that he mixes resveratrol with yogurt. About a year ago, he changed that protocol and then began to mix resveratrol with olive oil. However, I was pretty surprised to see that he also changed that protocol as well. Let's hear from him what he's doing now. Um, I've even tried, I like to mix up my diet like anybody else. I've tried olive oil plus a bit of vinegar and a basil leaf in the morning. It's like drinking, a, uh, what do you call it, salad dressing in the morning. Uh, that one lasted for about a month. I've given up on that. I now like this coconut yogurt that you've turned me on to, actually. The verdict? One gram of resveratrol mixed in coconut yogurt in the morning. As a segue here, if you have doubts about adding resveratrol into your supplement routine, don't go anywhere. We're going to touch this resveratrol controversy today. The next two supplements are from the same group, the same family of resveratrol, the polyphenols, the flavanols. Let's hear Sinclair explaining why he takes these supplements. Um, so I've added um, quercetin, uh, which is a molecule related to resveratrol, which is also uh, suppresses the activity of senescent cells. The, the one that I'm testing out is physetin, F-I-S-E-T-I-N, N, physetin. We showed in 2003 and 2005 in two nature papers that it extends the lifespan of animals, uh, small animals, worms and flies, but nevertheless, it's been now shown that it's senolytic. It kills off the senescent cells in the body, at least in mice, probably in humans, based on some human data. 
And so I'm looking at that. So this is the why, but how much does it take? This segment is from a long video in his channel. Fisidin and Cursidin. Half a gram in the yogurt. The verdict, 500 milligrams of quercetin and fisidin every morning mixed into yogurt. Probably now we can assume it's a coconut yogurt. The next supplement in our list is NMN. Let's hear Dr. David Sinclair explains about this supplement and how much he takes. And uh, so NMN is, is what I take each day. I take a, a gram of it. I know a, a gram is likely to be raising my NAD levels during the day. I also try to time it with my natural circadian rhythm. So NAD will go up during the morning, getting ready. Um, but if I take it at night, uh, what I find is that I'm actually starting to interfere with my sleep patterns. In all the interviews he has done since then, it's still the same dose, one gram of NMN in the morning. And it doesn't need to be mixed into anything, just with water. So the verdict, one gram in the morning with water. Let's move to the new supplement in Dr. David Sinclair protocol. Spermidine. Let's hear what he says about that. Uh, spermidine. There is. You can buy it now. It's, um, there's a, a company that makes it in pure form, very low levels of gluten. And just the last few months, I've added that to my protocol. And we'll have to see how my numbers look on Inside Tracker. Okay, so that's not, that's not something you've adopted and you're like, I'm definitely sticking with it. This is, I'm adopted and I'm testing it out to see how it works. I am. And I actually, I advise that company. It's mm -hmm. the first supplement company I, I am advising. And I did that because I wanted to look at the human clinical trials. And they, they look really promising as well. How much of that are you taking? Uh, a gram as well. Okay. So from this interview, it sounds like this is the most recent experimental supplement in his stack. Now, what about the dose? This is important, so listen to this. Even though in this video, Dr. David Sinclair mentioned it takes one gram of spermidine, later in the comment section, he corrected this dose. He said, correction. I said I take one gram of spermidine, but the active ingredient in the capsules is one to two milligrams. I apologize for the confusion. So the verdict about spermidine is one to two milligrams taking every day in the morning. This is what he said also in this podcast. Now, if you too consider to take spermidine and you think, okay, this is only an experiment he's doing on his body. Maybe there is a safer and cheaper way to get spermidine. And many of my subscribers ask me how to get spermidine from food. This study measured how much spermidine in each type of food and, and ranked them from the highest concentration to the lowest. I'm quoting from this study. Spermidine concentration in foods was as follows. Mushroom, the highest, 88.6 milligrams per kilo of food. Green peas, 65 milligrams per kilo of food. And broccoli, 32 milligrams per kilo of food. So as you can see, there is a bunch of spermidine in mushrooms, but also in broccoli and green peas. These levels coming from food more than satisfy or at least similar to the levels of spermidine that Dr. Sinclair takes in a supplement form. And also there is another certainty about the safety of spermidine in those foods. TMG. Now we are getting more into the controversial stuff. Let's hear Dr. David Sinclair explain on why he used to take TMG. The reason that I take um, glycine, actually specifically trimethylglycine, is, is actually to, to counter what I think might be going on with an NAD booster. But the thing with nicotinamide mononuclide NMN is that it, it has this nicotinamide group on it. It hangs off the, the main part of the chemical and it's the first bond to break. And so we see in animals and even in humans that the levels of nicotinamide go up quite rapidly after taking NMN or NR. And too, too high levels of nicotinamide are not good, um, in part because the nicotinamide gets excreted through the kidneys and it's done so that happens because it becomes methylated into methyl nicotinamide. But the concern that's, that's been talked about uh, in social media especially is is this drain of methyl nicotinamide a problem? The, the methyl groups are, are needed for the body. We need methyl for a whole range of things, including um, antioxidants. And uh, so as a precaution, I take trimethylglycine so that uh, I continue to give my body a source of methyl groups. Now, I don't know if that's true. Uh, people ask me all the time. I take it as a precaution because I know that trimethylglycine is not going to hurt me. Glycine is good, as you mentioned, Joe. Um, and the other thing is trimethylglycine is also known as betaine, uh, which on human cells is 
very good for them, um, including protecting them against stress. So I don't, I don't see any downside. It's not an expensive molecule. And the upside is that I'm preventing my body from being drained of methyl groups. But the reason that I can't say for sure that it's ne necessary, actually, is that our bodies can make methyl groups. There's a whole pathway. In fact, I did a PhD on it when I was in Australia 30 years ago. Um, but So I do take it as a precaution. Now, Dr. David Sinclair didn't mention TMG in his last interviews. As he stopped taking TMG, your guess is as good as mine. But as we can see how he adds and stack up supplements, the likelihood that he doesn't stop taking them unless there is a very good reason or risk of taking them. And TMG is a pretty safe supplement. How much does it take? He never said. But the standard dose is about 500 milligrams. The verdict about TMG is yours. Based on what he said, you can make up your own mind if you want to add this supplement to your supplement routine. The next one is metformin. Metformin is a drug, of course, not a food supplement. But Sinclair mentioned that in his book. Why does he take metformin? Let's hear him explaining exactly that. I try to take a couple of metformin pills um, for two reasons. One is that my family has a history of diabetes and metformin is very effective at treating diabetes and even preventing it. So I do that for disease reasons, but also because the work of many labs has pointed to um, not just animals, but tens of thousands of people in clinical trials benefiting from that drug, which seems to uh, enhance and mimic the, the benefits of fasting. Now, what about the dose? So we said in the book it was one gram. He said he takes one gram of metformin every day. Apparently, he changed a bit the dose. In a recent podcast, he said, I'm quoting, I take 800 milligrams at night. But he added that he does not take metformin the days before exercise. Anyhow, 800 milligrams and one gram is very close dose, so it hasn't changed dramatically. About the timing of metformin, Dr. David Sinclair says that he takes it at night. This corroborates what I found with, with my own body and my own experiment with metformin. Over the last three years, I found that metformin is very useful to my body before bedtime because it offsets the glucose-stimulating hormones at night, melatonin and growth hormone. These two are natural hormones produced by the body, and they are increasing the sleep quality. They are good hormones for anti-aging. However, one of the things they are doing is increasing glucose at night. So personally, I found what Dr. Sinclair, I guess, found himself, that metformin helps to reduce the blood sugar at night. But again, it's a drug, it's not a food supplement, and it's just my experience and not a recommendation to anybody. The verdict about metformin, 800 milligrams, six days a week, day off, the night before exercise. Another drug that Dr. David Sinclair mentioned in his book and in other interviews is baby aspirin to reduce inflammation. Now let's go to a summary of Dr. David Sinclair's supplement stack or supplement protocol. And after that, I'm going to show you a very spicy comment from Dr. David Sinclair about resveratrol controversy. Finishing today's video with resveratrol again. You may have heard about controversies about resveratrol. For example, these studies show that resveratrol offset the beneficial effects of exercise in humans. That leads us to a very interesting story. Dr. Brad Stanfield published a video called Why I Stopped Taking Resveratrol, mentioning those exercise studies. On his Twitter account, Dr. David Sinclair commented on Stanfield's video describing it as what would seem as horse shit. So this is a bit confusing if you're taking resveratrol. On its face value, there is no reason not to go with Sinclair take on resveratrol. But what is even more confusing is that those studies and papers Dr. Stainfield mentioned seem legit. Luckily, there is a video that clears that confusion between Dr. Stainfield and Dr. David Sinclair. I'm going to put a link to this video where we clarify this confusion so you can make up a decision for your own body about resveratrol in your supplement stack. Another interesting thing about resveratrol and controversy about that is that did you know that in Dr. David Sinclair's own study, low resveratrol worked better for longevity than high resveratrol? When I saw that, I was pretty shocked. So I created another video that explored this study and the best resveratrol dose for longevity, not necessarily sickness. For this video as well, you can find the link in the description. So you can find the link of both of these uh, resveratrol controversies in the description and the pinned comment of this video. Until the next video, stay healthy, stay young, and stay subscribed.